Good morning, or good evening, I don't know. Whatever time it is, I'm gonna talk about Scout. Mainly how to conserve Scout's uh, walnuts. Not nuts. Inappropriate. Okay? Family friendly. But also, a few other things, not just con uh, conserving your ammo. First of all, let's talk about the abilities. The main thing, of course, is the slingshot. There are quick and charged shots, each having different stun times and damage. Mainly, you want to do charged shots since they actually deal damage, while quick shots are mainly used if you're like panicking or you're using it to charge up evasive maneuvers. And of course, scouts max ammo is 10, you probably already know that. And evasive maneuvers gives you a speed boost, around the speed boost of a candy bar. And it will activate if you hit the neighbor three times within a time period. This time period is a two second timer. But if you hit the neighbor with any shot, so quick to charge, the timer will reset giving you an extra two seconds. So just imagine a timer of two seconds and when you hit the neighbor, the timer resets to two seconds again. So yeah, you can in reality get like four to six seconds, I guess. Uh, and of course, since that, you could do charged or uh, quick. If you are um, attacking the neighbor, of course, charge is always more favored. And really, it's not that difficult charging up evasive maneuvers with um, charge shots. And if you may be questioning why you need the speed, if it's like worth stressing to get evasive maneuvers it's kind of just nice because the neighbor kind of can't well, attack you i guess so that's mainly why i use and i mean most people use it but and of course if you're always afraid don't be scared to use quick shots like if if you're like the neighbor appears or you think you're gonna die just panic it's okay now let's move on to locations and note these don't have to be like ingrained in your brain it's just a good idea to like get an idea of their locations so that way if you need to know where one is you can do looking for young walnut bags in your area so now i'm going to show you the refill stations on map one First of all, there's one in the shed outside. The second location on map one is in the garage, right where this little couch setup is. And now from the main basement area, if you go up these stairs here, you get in this hallway with a refill station. On the third floor in the kitchen, there is another refill station right next to the refrigerator on the little drawer here. Through the little neighbor gate here, and if you head up to the greenhouse, there is also a refill station in there. The last one's through the hole in the little prison room here, or it's upstairs from the kitchen. Now onto map two, right next to the basement area in the kitchen, there is a refill station. Now past the bathroom here and into the garage, there is another additional refill station. Upstairs where there's two bedrooms, there's also a refill station. There's another refill station on the third floor in the prison room here. In the level 3 keycard area where the kitchen is, there's also a refill station. Heading up to the roof, there is another refill station and that is the final one. Now for map 3, there's also one in the shed. Now through level 1 keycard door, well there isn't because I have keycards off, there is a refill station here. Now, if you go up to where the car is, there's a refill station right next to it. Go up some stairs two more times, and through this little window here, there is another refill station. Now, in the level 3 key card room, aka the garage, there's a refill station as well. Additionally, in the theater room, there is also a refill station on the floor here. Now, something special about map 4 is that it only has four refill stations, but anyways, the first one is in the greenhouse. 
there's also one sitting in the kitchen. Now if we go into the basement, there is one in the shed, and there's also one in this little intersection room here. I don't know if it's really called intersection room, I just like to call it intersection room because, well, it's a large room in the middle of areas with doorways. Now, we actually have a really real sponsor. I'm totally not making a joke. This is so real, and you should totally believe it. By the way, this is like a joke. It's like, you know, skip ahead if you don't really want to listen to this. And our sponsors are a little loud, so like actually, you know, maybe lower your volume a little. Like, you know, you know our sponsors are really excited. Also, what you're about to see is from all the footage that has been taken from uh, what you've been seeing in the background, so yeah. What? Is it the oh, 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 what is it? 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 Okay, now let's talk more about the slingshot. Charge shots deal about the same damage as like a regular thrown item, but it's slightly less. Meaning that you could try to attempt to kill a neighbor, but I like to discourage it as you might be alone doing it and that could be dangerous, but also, come on, cut the neighbor some slack. Also remember, you can shoot through the neighbor's gates. It just can take a little bit of precision, but you can save someone that maybe cop uh, from a butcher neighbor since, well, you get some really easy kills as butcher neighbor with the neighbor gates. The slingshot could be useful to have out when maybe the neighbor appears behind you or maybe you have keys and key cards in your inventory, so you may want to keep those or just their bad throwing items. I'd say the slingshot is most useful when saving someone could be difficult as slingshots have nearly no arc and are pretty accurate. Though there is a noticeable arc when using quick shots. Charge shots have an arc, but I mean, I'd not worry about it. Now moving on to when you should try to activate evasive maneuvers. Usually I do it when I know I can't fight the neighbor. so when you're on your own or with low ammo or just don't want to fight them. You can also use evasive maneuvers in combat as a neighbor might not even be able to touch you with it. And let's talk about playing as scout as a neighbor. Well, simply you can knock down people with your slingshot, though I'd only recommend doing this against groups of two. And also scout is amazing when you're trying to chase down someone who's running away. To shoot them with charge shots. Last thing is how to deal with scouts. Usually, if you're the neighbor versus a scout, you're kind of limited on what you could do. Usually, you definitely want to target them as basically they're going to be saving the entire team. But also, facing a scout head on is not exactly a good idea. Maybe try to get around them a little or see if you can stop them from finding you near a refill station because basically if they're not near a refill station they're gonna have to conserve those shots. Also if a scout is the neighbor and they're firing at you there really isn't much you could do. I mean you could try to dodge but it, it probably won't really do anything for you. Just if you know a scout is a neighbor give them no chance if you let them start shooting your teammates everything's gonna go downhill don't give them any chances and yeah that's really all hopefully i didn't miss anything important because probably some scout was gonna be in my house at 3am you know some 3am clickbait i hope this helped out and have a nice day